Hello, Palisades family. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Over the last several weeks, we've been looking at a number of hymns that bring us help and hope during difficult times. Today we have another one, but as a way of introducing something significant about this hymn, I want to call something to your attention which you may not be aware of in the hymns that we sing. Did you know that many hymns have tunes that were adapted from works by well-known classical composers? You're probably familiar with their names. We'll take them in chronological order. Johann Sebastian Bach harmonized a tune by Hans Leo Hassler and turned it into a chorale in one of his cantatas. We know it as O Sacred Head Now Wounded. George Frederick Handel gave us the tune for several hymns. Here's one you know. Joy to the World. But he also gave us a tune for an often sung Easter hymn, Thine is the Glory. It comes from his cantata, Judas Maccabeus. The tune for a hymn that is perhaps one of the most beloved hymns is from the fourth movement of the Ninth Symphony of Ludwig van Beethoven, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. A symphony of Johannes Brahms is the source of the tune for a contemporary hymn with a beautiful scriptural illusion throughout the hymn. It's by Brian Jeffrey Leach. We are God's people, the chosen of the Lord. century German composer Robert Schumann provided the tune for a beautiful hymn by Francis Ridley Havergal. Lord, speak to me that I may speak in living echoes of thy tone. Finally, we come to our hymn for today, Be Still, My Soul. The tune comes from the great Finnish composer who lived from 1865 to 1957, Jan Sibelius. It is from his most well-known work, Finlandia. The author of the words lived about 200 years before Katharina Emilia Dorothea von Schlegel was born October 22nd, 1697. Her name suggests that she came from an aristocracy, that she lived in an era when there was definitely great class distinctions and she was at the high level. Her letters from 1750 to 52 with Heinrich Ernst Count Stolberg suggests that she was a member of a small court of the Duke of anhalt kirten a court where Johann Sebastian Bach was musical director 
from 1717 to 1723. Whether or not she knew the great composer is a mystery. Katharina von Schlegel is said to have written 29 hymns. Her writing was shaped by the pietist tradition of a deep personal relationship with and commitment to Jesus and a deep grounding in scriptures. The hymn we know as Be Still My Soul first appeared in publication in 1752, said to be there for the spiritual upbuilding and enrichment of the faithful. <clears throat> About 100 years after its writing, the hymn was translated into English by Jan Borthwick, who was noted for her excellent translations of German texts. So God used the talents of three individuals from three different countries to provide us with a hymn that teaches so well the biblical truth of Isaiah 40, 31, one that we all need to remember. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. As we look at the three verses of this hymn that are in the hymnal, out of six originally written, the, ver the first verse suggests that the author knew what it was to struggle with the problems of this life. Be still, my soul, the Lord is on thy side. Bear patiently the cross of grief or pain. Leave to thy God to order and provide. In every change he faithful will remain. Be still, my soul, thy best, thy heavenly friend, through thorny ways leads to a joyful end. Those words remind us of the seventh verse of the profound 37th Psalm. Be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for him to act. Don't worry about evil people who prosper or fret about their wicked schemes. The second verse says, Be still, my soul, thy God doth undertake to guide the future as he has the past. Thy hope, thy confidence, let nothing shake. All now mysterious shall be bright at last. Be still, my soul, the waves and winds still know his voice who ruled them while he dwelt below. Can we know that God will guide the future? Can we have that kind of hope and confidence of which the hymn speaks? Again, we turn to scripture. Listen to Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call upon me, and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. What marvelous promises. As in the case of many older hymns, the last verse looks to the time of our perfected salvation and presence with the Lord. Be still, my soul. The hour is hastening on when we shall be forever with the Lord. When disappointment, grief, and fear are gone, sorrow for God, love's purest joys restored. Be still, my soul, when change and tears are past, all safe and blessed, we shall meet at last. Our eternal life with the Lord will be different from our experience here. Disappointment, grief, and fear will be gone. Love's purest joys will be restored. That's why the Apostle Paul could remind us in 2 Corinthians 5, 8, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. One more interesting thing about this hymn 
Be Still My Soul was the favorite hymn of Eric Liddell, son of Scottish Presbyterian missionaries, whose story is told in the film Chariots of Fire. He was the gold medal runner in the 1924 Olympics, who later went to China as a missionary and ended his life in a Japanese prison camp during World War II. He had had the opportunity to be released as part of a prisoner exchange, but he chose to give that position to an expectant mother, and he wanted to remain so that he could continue to minister to the other prisoners. On the last full day of his life, he asked that his favorite hymn, the one from which he had gained strength throughout his life would be sung by his friends. Be still, my soul. The Lord is on thy side. Bear patiently the cross of grief or pain. Leave to thy God to order and provide. In every change he faithful will remain. Be still, my soul, thy best thy heavenly friend through thorny ways leads to a joyful end. We thank you that you are a God who loves us so much that you provide all that we really need. As we begin another week, may our souls be still before you. May we be patient no matter what happens. We thank you that we have a heavenly friend in Jesus who is going to always hold us in his care. We pray in his blessed name. Amen. Have a wonderful week.